pilot that earns an instrument rating is a pilot that has mastered his flight skills to a level of precision and accuracy needed to safely fly an airplane through clouds, fog, and other adverse weather conditions. While flying in these conditions known as Instrument Meteorological Conditions, or IMC, a pilot is tasked with flying an airplane solely by reference to flight instruments. In other words, the pilot needs to be able to go from takeoff to landing without having any outside visual references. Perhaps the most critical phase of an instrument flight is the instrument approach. This is the final phase of the flight when the pilot transitions from IMC flight to a visual landing after maneuvering the aircraft throughout the national airspace system. On this episode of UND Aerospace's Aerocast, we will discuss the procedures and techniques used in the Cessna 172 to fly an approach that offers only horizontal navigation guidance, commonly referred to as a non-precision instrument approach. Reviewing this information along with the training of an FAA certified instrument flight instructor will help to refine your instrument skills and make you more organized and comfortable during your next instrument flight. Of course, you should not attempt a flight in IMC unless you are a proficient instrument rated pilot that meets the recency requirements of FAR Part 61 or you are under the direct supervision of an FAA certified instrument flight instructor. The objective of a non-precision instrument approach is to achieve the skill and knowledge necessary to transition from the en route phase of the instrument approach and then to a landing using only horizontal guidance. In this video, the airplane will be flown from cruise flight to a point where a safe visual landing can be made using only the horizontal guidance provided by a VOR, NDB, LDA, SDF, localizer, localizer back course, GPS, or airport surveillance radar. As a pilot approaches her destination airport, she must select the most appropriate instrument approach procedure. A decision will be based on many criteria, including current weather conditions, navigation equipment available both at the airport and in the airplane, and air traffic control requirements or requests. Once the pilot has determined which procedure she will fly, it is important that they select, tune, identify, and confirm the operational status of the navigation equipment to be used. Once this is complete, the pilot should set the proper course with the Omni Bearing Selector, or in the case of an ASR approach, fly the assigned headings and altitudes. It is important to note that in many technologically advanced aircraft, such as UND's Garmin 1000 equipped Cessna 172s, the avionics will automatically select the proper OBS course when conducting certain types of approaches. However, it is still important that the pilot confirms that the correct navigation source and OBS course has been set. Once the approach procedure has been selected and the pilot has begun to set up the aircraft's avionics, she must be sure to establish the appropriate airplane configuration and airspeed prior to executing the approach procedure. In the Cessna 172, the pilot should fly at an airspeed of 100 knots while executing any required procedure turn or while flying ATC-assigned radar vectors. While changing airspeeds, however, it is important that the pilot complies with any clearances or instructions issued by air traffic control. Prior to arriving at the initial approach fix, or if receiving radar vectors prior to intercepting the final approach course, the pilot should complete the descent checklist. In UND's Cessna 172, this checklist includes the following items. GPS, flight plan entered and instrument approach loaded. NAVCOM 1, set the approach control, if available, and set the tower CTAF frequency in standby. NAVCOM 2, set ATIS frequency in use and set ground control frequency in standby. Audio panel. Adjust volume level and squelch for both left and right seat. Select either COM1 or COM2. Ensure all other audio buttons are not selected. Altimeters. Set barrel on PFD and the standby altimeter. CDI soft key. Select nav source. Note that the course deviation indicator will change color and appearance based upon which nav source is being used. 
The needle will be magenta when using GPS navigation, a single green line when using Nav 1, and a double green line when Nav 2 is selected. Pedo Heat Select Pedo Heat on if descending through visible moisture. Aircraft Lights Pulse Light on at the top of descent. Mixture Adjust for smooth engine operation, as necessary to make the engine run smoothly. Descent Power Adjust power to desired RPM setting and rate of descent. Engine Instruments Monitor oil pressure, oil temperature, ammeter, and vacuum. Fuel Selector Both Approach Briefing Complete each one of these items is necessary in order to conduct a safe instrument approach. The approach briefing, however, is notably important as it allows the pilot to familiarize him or herself and the other crew members with the instrument approach procedure to be used. The approach briefing should contain the following items. Type of approach, primary nav aid, frequency, identifier, final approach course, Minimum altitude at final approach fix. Lowest applicable minimum descent altitude. Airport elevation and touchdown zone elevation. Missed approach point. Missed approach instructions. Applicable approach procedure notes. Indicated airspeed and flap configuration to be flown, landing runway, and runway length. Today we're going to be doing the RNAV uh, GPS runway 35 left approach at Grand Forks. Our nav aid frequency, uh, it is a GPS. We have that set in. Our final approach course is 354. Our altitude we're going to be at, uh, we're being vectored right now. Once we're established and cleared for the approach, we can go down to 2600 until we reach Jagby. After we cross Jagby, we can go down to our uh, MDA, uh, which is uh, 1095 and a half mile uh, visibility. Our touchdown zone elevation for this approach is uh, 845. Our runway length is 7,351 feet. The landing distance is uh, about 585 feet today. Air speed of is going to be 90 knots. Our flap setting is going to be 10 knots. Our missed approach point will be the GPS will let us know, plus uh, the runway 35 left. Our missed approach instructions are climb to 2600, direct to FODIB and hold. Any questions? Remember that the UND Aerospace Takeoff and Landing Distance Card, or TOLD card, should be used when conducting the approach briefing. It contains all of the required items that must be included in this briefing. The pilot should use the approach briefing to physically prepare the cockpit by setting the avionics and organizing approach charts. In addition, the approach briefing should be used to help the pilot mentally prepare for the approach.